We're now going to work on section 2.2, and if you have your section 2.2 handout, I have some good news. Uh, the first piece of good news is we're only doing problems 1, 2, 3, and 4, so immediately cross out number 5. Uh, it's a kind of fun thinking problem. I encourage you to do it on your own, but uh, I'm not going to talk about it. And then the back page is about even and odd functions, which we will talk about in class, because we're going to talk uh, we're going to treat that subject very lightly in this class. So, uh, let's start with the hard problems and then move on to the easy problem for section 2.2. So, section 2.2 says, let's find this, read these instructions across the top. It says, find and simplify the difference quotient, and then it gives you this weird looking expression for the given function. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this a little bit larger here. Let me write down your difference quotient. f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, and of course h is never allowed to be zero. This is a difference quotient, and we teach this to you for two reasons. Reason one is it's just good practice with function notation and algebra and simplifying expressions. Okay. And number two is if you go on in mathematics, uh, you will see the difference quotient again used as the basis for other more complicated things. And when you get to, say, calculus or a, a business calculus type class and they show this to you, they expect that you can do the algebra behind it. So that's what our focus is, is just working on the algebra and simplifying this expression. Now the way I would like you to do it is I would like you to do it step by step. So let's use uh, number one as an example. Okay, so the function is f of x is equal to 8x plus 9. And we're going to find and simplify our difference quotient. So um, I do this in three steps. So step, I'll call it A, is to first figure out what f of x plus h is. And we're going to use in that fill-in-the-blank idea. So over here, let's look at our original function, and let's say it in words. It says take 8, multiply it by your input, and then add 9. Now, what's the input this time? This expression, x plus h. And now let's simplify that. Well, let's multiply that, I should say whether it's simpler or not, could be argued. So we would get 8x plus 8h plus 9. And that's it. I can't, there are no like terms, that's it. Okay, that's all right. Step B is, the second step, is take your answer from part A, which would be this part, f of x plus h, and subtract off f of x, the original function. So let's do that. What's my answer from part A? 8x plus 8h plus 9. And I want to subtract my original function, which was 8x plus 9. Don't forget your parentheses, because we're subtracting the whole original function. And I'm going to skip a step. I'm sure you can handle it. And look what happens. 8x minus 8x is 0. 9 minus 9 is 0. I'm just left with 8h. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. Part C, the last step, is to then take the answer you got from B, which, remember, was f of x plus h minus f of x, and now divide that answer by h. Equal. So what was our answer from B? It was just 8h. And I'm going to divide that by h, and I get 8. Now that's interesting, because the original function was, wait, what was it? 8x plus 9. Now if you recall, that's a line, if I graph it, and the slope of that line is 8. And when I simplified the difference quotient, I got 8, the slope. Hmm, okay, we'll talk about that more later. Let's try one that's a little bit more difficult. So let's do number two. Number two, the function is f of x is equal to 5x squared. 
Okay. And now, again, it says find and simplify the difference quotient. So here's the first piece of good news. The difference quotient will always be given to you. You don't have to memorize it. Unless you go to calculus, then you do. Okay, so let's write it down again here so that we can see it. And let's do it step by step. Okay, so remember part A, the first step, figure out what f of x plus h is. Okay, so let's look. Our original function says take 5 times your input squared. Okay, so I just took out the x, put in a blank spot, and I fill in my blank with x plus h. Don't forget you have to square first before you multiply by 5, and don't forget this is a binomial squared, so it's x plus h times x plus h, so you should get 5 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And let's distribute our 5, 5x five squared plus 10xh plus 5h squared. There is part A. Part B is now take your answer from part A, which was f of x plus h, minus the original function f of x. So that would be, for our problem, our answer from part A is 5x squared plus 10xh plus 5h squared minus the original function was 5x squared. And when I simplify that, I get 10xh plus 5h squared. Okay, let's leave it at that. Now part C is the last step. Remember the answer from part B was this piece, the top, f of x plus h minus f of x. And now I want to divide that answer by h. So my answer from part B is 10xh plus 5h squared. And I want to divide by h. Don't forget, factor before you cancel, factor before you cancel. Let's factor an h out of the top, and I am left with 10x plus 5h all over h, and now I'm allowed to cancel my h's, and I get 10x plus 5h, and that is the difference quotient for number 2. Now, uh, I'm actually going to save number 3. It's a fun problem. It's kind of a trick problem, and we'll do it together in class so we can discuss it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to move on now. Back to the handout, we're looking at number 4. Now, a problem like number 4, the instructions say evaluate the piecewise function. Okay, I will guarantee you that this, a problem like this is on the exam, a problem like this is on the final. And if you understand how to you do this problem, it is super easy. If you don't understand how to do it, it makes no sense whatsoever. So let's first talk about what is a piecewise function. A piecewise function is literally just a function that's made up of two or more rules, different pieces. And the piece or the rule you use depends on what your x was to begin with. Okay? So let's look at the example we have here. It says f of x is equal to, and you have two pieces. Your choices are you can either use the rule negative 5x plus 4 if x is less than negative 3. That means if your input or your x value is less than negative 3, you want to use this top rule. Okay. The second choice is 2x plus 3 is the other rule, but you only use that rule if x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Notice your x is only going to fit in one of these two categories. It will never be in both. So you decide, well, my x fits in which of these two categories, and then that is the rule you use. You should only get one answer. There should never be two answers. And if you show me two answers, that means you don't understand it, and I'm going to have to give you a zero. Okay? So, we'll do